episode 150. Ready, set, go. Welcome back to One Extraordinary Marriage, where we talk about sex, love, and commitment. You're here with Elisa DiLorenzo. And Tony DiLorenzo. Happy 150th! Yes. We are so excited. And happy new year. For this, well, that, that's what I was going to say, that, you know, that our 150th episode coincides with the post that goes up on New Year's Day 2013. Well, I have to say, when Tony first suggested podcasting three over three years ago now, um, I thought he was nuts. Right. And I had no idea that we'd make it 150 episodes and who knows how many more in our future. Right. And we want to hear from you guys. You know that. So call in 858 858- Eight seven six five six six three. We want to know how we've impacted your life, or how the one family has impacted your life over the last three years. You can call us in or info at one extraordinary marriage dot com. Again, all of those are anonymous. You don't have to worry about us talking about your name or your where you're from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's been a special time with all of you. And as Terry mm-hmm. talks about, you know, the one community. It's not just. It's not just the podcast. Well, it's, it's just not, not a community, man. You guys are you guys are part of our family. We we truly, you know, you're an extended family, and it's not uncommon for us to be around San Diego now. And we see people, and it's just like, "Hey, hun, how you doing? What, what? Where can we help you? You know, we're giving hugs, and you're part of our family. Mm-hmm. And that's a special, very special thing for us. And and this episode is a special one. You know, as we talk about Ready, Set, Go, we're releasing this episode on the very first day of a brand new year. And we always look toward New Year's as a clean slate. Mm-hmm. It's a fresh start. You know, everything that's happened in the last 12 months, that's, that's in the past. You can't change your past. You have this moment now and the moments going forward that you can impact. Mm-hmm. And so we want to talk to you guys today about what 2013 is going to look like in your marriage. And we called this ready, set, go, because that was, you know, like when we wrote the seven days of sex challenge, we wrote that as a ready, set, go guide. Mm -hmm. We wanted to give you, you know, the nuts and bolts, the tools to equip you with. And we wanted to give you the how to, and we wanted to launch you into creating intimacy in your marriage. That's where the seven days of sex challenge came from. And if you haven't picked it up, pick it up, go through the website. It's under the store. Tony's got it all packaged. You know, Tony, he does all that fabulous back end stuff for me. So I just get to sit here and talk. Right. And it is available now in ebook format Woo-hoo! and will be available in a physical book here, probably by the end of the month. So keep an eye out for that. Or if you see us around town here in San Diego, when either Elisa, and I are speaking, we will have it at our events. Mm-hmm. And so coming out of, that book, that's really how we've modeled a lot of things that we've been developing over this last year. It's right. like we want to give you the tools, we want to give you the action plan, and we want to implement that, see you implement that in your lives. And so as we were thinking about where have we been over the last 150 episodes, what have we seen happen? And you know, we did then and now a couple weeks ago, which was our personal story. Right. But what I want to share, what we want to share with you guys today is really the story of transformation that couples who have been part of the one community have experienced. Mm -hmm. We've seen phenomenal growth in your marriages. We've seen change happen. We've seen marriages transformed and it's because you guys embraced some of these principles that we talk about week in and week out and decided that you were going to be the one to make a change in your marriage. Right. And when you start to do that, in so many of these instances, your spouse comes along for the ride because they're like, wow, this is getting good. Right. What, what am I going on here for? And, and they're just some, and I'm not using names today, but they're just some people that have shared their stories with us that you guys need to hear. Maybe those of you that have come on board recently and have been downloading, you know, 50 podcasts at a time, you've heard some of these stories recently. But if you were with us in the beginning, you may not remember right. some of these stories. We had a listener write in, Relatively new mom, her baby was about nine months old Mm -hmm. when she had written to us and she was very frustrated with how their sex life was going and about why her husband wasn't making sex more appealing to her. 
and you know, she went on and, and I had to take a step back from that email because she was talking about all of these things, you know, all of these other things that she has to do. And, and the sense that I got from the email was, and then at the end of the day, I have to have sex with my husband. Like, ugh, one more thing I have to do because I'm doing all of these things. And I, I really did take a tough love approach with her. And I said, sweetheart, if he's at the bottom of your to-do list, why on earth would he try and claw his way out from there? Mm-hmm. Why would he try and, and do all these other things? If you're telling him, you know, like I said, the baby was nine months old at the time. If you're letting him know that he's after all the dirty diapers and the feedings and the late night, you know, screaming baby and you don't even want to look good for, you know, it was all of these things. And, and I just said, you know what? If you don't let him know he's important, he is not going to make sex enjoyable because mm-hmm. he doesn't feel it. We, we so often we put our husbands at the bottom of these piles of all of our to do's. And then we wonder why we're not getting the sense that they love and cherish us. Right. And from a, from a husband's point of view too, you know, we feel that we're going out there and we're providing, we're doing what we need to do to support the family. And so even though what happens is outside of the home, there is this sense of pride that we bring that, hey, you know what? I am supporting my family. I am doing my job to take care of this family so we can eat, so we can have clothes, so we can have a roof over our head. And that becomes a tough place for us because when we come in and we are shoved to the bottom of that to-do list, we don't feel the respect that we so desire. And so we start to go, husbands, not all, me in particular, would go, okay, well, if I'm not being cherished and loved here, where am I going to go get that? And for a lot of guys, they, they find the validation in their work. So you'll see them spending more hours at work because there, if they turn in a good report or they've got good sales or great customer service, somebody pats them on the back and says, wow. Good job. Good job. Right. And that's really, that's all for most of us that good job or, you know, I appreciate what you did or just a simple thank you Mm -hmm. goes so long in, in healing hurts and pain. And so in this particular listener's case, I, I did, I got a little harsh with her and you guys had corrected me or, you know, came down on me saying, I think you were too hard on her. And I said, you know what? Her marriage is in trouble. Right. If she doesn't, take equal responsibility for what's going on in their marriage and and make that relationship a priority, they're going to be in a world of hurt for years to come. And in their particular case, she wrote back to us. It was probably six months later. Yeah. Seven months. I didn't hear from her. I thought, oh, I just lost a listener, Uh, which happens. We know that you guys don't always agree with what we have to say. And, you know, that's fine. We, we don't, we don't agree with each other. At you, times. You've, you've heard that on the show. But she wrote back to us after about six months and said right. that it, it had been hard to hear, read, what I had to say. But in her case, she took it to heart. And she told her husband, anytime you let me know before 10 o'clock that you want to be in with, intimate with me, that you want to spend time with me, that you want to have sex with me, I will be ready. Right. She changed her marriage with that one decision. To let her husband know, look, I am, I am busy. I am juggling motherhood. It's unlike anything else I've ever experienced. But I value you. And if you can give me this window to say, okay, you know, not 10.02, 9.59. If you can let me know by 10 o'clock, I will be ready for you. Mm-hmm. And that took a real commitment on her part to say, I'm not going to use the excuses because if you're the partner in the marriage that use the excuses, I'm too tired, it's too late, the da, da 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 When you make that decision not to use your excuses, you will dramatically change your marriage for the good. And that's what this listener did. And you know, it was so it was so encouraging to get the email when she wrote back to us after six months to say, you know what? She made a decision. She wasn't going to play the victim in her marriage of a husband that, you know, wasn't making it worth her while she was going to step up and say, I can change this right 
for the better. And that was one of those success stories. We're like, wow. Mm -hmm. Personal responsibility, folks. So many times in our marriages, we are quick to blame our spouse. We are quick to point out their faults because it's so much easier to look at their shortcomings than it is to look at our own. It's so much easier to say, well, why doesn't he do this? Why doesn't she do that? Doesn't he know I'm doing all this? Doesn't she think I do enough? Stop looking outward. Stop looking outward. What can I do to make a change in my marriage today? That is a question you need to ask. We cannot change our spouse by wishing, praying, hoping, grasping, yelling at them, telling them, emailing them, texting them. Very difficult, Mm -hmm. but we can make change in our own lives each and every day by taking small little actions. And the question you need to ask yourself each and every day when you get at this point, when you want to blame, blame somebody else or point the finger at your spouse, what can I do today to make my marriage what I want it to be? And that is what this listener did. She said, what can I do to make a change? She decided that as long as her husband told her by 10 p.m. that he wanted sex, she was game. Mm-hmm. And, and that, that meant that she had to change her priorities. Right. And that's what we talk to you guys about a lot. You need to double check where your priorities are. Yeah. And last night I was <laughs> driving funny. to the blood bank with my daughter, Abby, and we were just rolling along and she goes, Dad... Now, let me understand this right. When, I, when, you and mommy, when you and mommy are together, right, she goes, how do, you, how do you plan out from the top down again? And so we started talking. My daughter, who is seven years old, is already understanding that from the top down, God comes first, and then my spouse, and then my kids, and then my work, and then my other activities. Those are the priorities they should be in my life. And she's asking, she goes, well, what happens when Alex and I come before mommy? I go, well, it causes havoc in our, in our relationship. It causes havoc in our family. And, and she's asking why and how. And, and she's grabbing this at seven years old going, okay, so when I find somebody, and I'm like, yes, when you find somebody a lot. 30 years yeah, at least. You many, know, many years down the road, yes. When you do, <gasps> yes, God's going to come first in your relationship and in your marriage and then your spouse will come next and then once you have kids they those guys will come after that and then you know everything else and so in our lives we forget this many a times we forget this everything else comes first and then like elisa said our spouse will come at the end and we don't want to be there we want to be cherished we want to be loved we want to be romance we want we want that passion and to have that we need to mentally and physically go okay i am going to put my spouse up there what am i going to do how am i going to make sure that my spouse knows that they come after god and before the kids and i just have to say the reason i think that abby asked this question is last week when i was practicing for a presentation that i was giving i actually practiced in front of the kids mm. just as a side note folks if you ever have to prepare a presentation and you want a tough crowd to practice on practice on your children because mine were just sitting there raising their hands asking questions being critical but i will tell you that when i got to the point in my presentation where i said that there's an epidemic of marriages ending in divorce between years 20 and 30. And the reason for that is because there's been such a focus on the kids Mm. that when your baby goes off to college, you look across the table and you say, who is this stranger? Both of my kids sat there still. And our kids are not known for being still, even in their sleep. So I'm telling you, if a seven and a 10 year old can grab this concept of from the top down, yeah, there is absolutely no reason that you can't get your priorities in order. And that might be what you're looking at for this year. You know, this, this might be the year for you where you go, you know what? We have been jumbled up. I have been jumbled up. You know, what can I do this year? And maybe this is it. You know, you're going to start praying together each night. You're going to read your Bible. You're going to have some quiet time. You know, you're going to put God first in your life. 
And then you're going to find ways that you're going to be able to put your spouse second and then your kids and then your work. Mm-hmm. You know, that might be it for you. We're not going to tell you what you need to do this year. For some of you, hey, it might be launching right off into the seven days of sex challenge. And that's, you know, it's not a bad way to start a new year. No, not <laughs> at all. I mean, for for I mean, other gonna... views, for other of you, it's, it's going to be you're going to pull out your calendar and you're going to look at the next 12 months and you're going to put date night or date day or date lunch or whatever it's going to be for you over the next 12 months and you're going to put it in your calendar. And that way, there is no, are we doing date? Are we going to get on date this month? Are we not? Who's planning it? Who's, who's it? No, it's done. It's, it's in the book, you know? In fact, write it in pen. Right. Put it in pen. And yes, we know work situations may come up that may have to move one of them or two of them. Well, you, you take it at that point in time and you adjust. But right now you have the opportunity. It's a clean slate. You can look at your calendar and put down 12 dates when you guys are going to get together. Maybe you're going to start the intimacy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's your one thing. You know, maybe you're going to take time and work out together this year. Maybe the two of you have put on some extra pounds and have decided, you know what? We're going to get healthy together. Is that walking three, four times a week? Is that picking up something like a Les Mills pump and doing some resistance training at home? Or maybe you're like this gentleman I met yesterday at a networking group who was sharing with me that he and his wife are on a swim team and they get up at four o'clock every morning to swim together. Yeah. Which just blows my mind because I'm so into my sleep, but I love that that was something that they did together. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, that they figured out that this is something they're both passionate about. This is what they want to do. And so they make it happen. Maybe that's your thing. Maybe this is the year to get your finances in order. You know, maybe maybe you're looking at, okay, you know, Christmas didn't go so well. We overspent. We, you know, or we've got issues coming up with jobs and whatnot. Maybe, maybe now's the time to sit down at the start of 2013 and plan out a cash plan Mm -hmm. for you guys to say, you know what? We're going to try something different this year because what we've been doing hasn't been working. And I want to, I want to be very specific here. We are not asking you guys to make new year's resolutions. Yeah. And there's a reason why. And a, it's because people hear the word resolution. And I think mentally something in their brain says it only has to last for two weeks. Yeah, you know, that's why the gyms are, you know, packed for the first two weeks of January. And then by the 15th, everybody's like, yeah, I'm, d- I'm done with that. I'm done. We don't want you to make a resolution. We want you to make a change, a, a lifestyle change and a commitment yes. to one another and to yourselves. You know, when you reflect back on where you've been in 2012 and, and prior in your marriage, where do you want to take your marriage in 2013? I mean, we, we got an email was it yesterday mm-hmm. from the couple that did it? Mm-hmm. We got it. It was just we yesterday. Got a, we did it. We yeah. got it. We did it. We were so excited. Um, they wrote in, and you know, we, we haven't seen a lot of those emails lately. I'm thinking because December's hard to get in the seven days of sex challenge, but they did, and it was great to hear because they were sharing some of what they had learned just about communication and about spending that time together, the intentional time right. that we spend together because that seven days of sex challenge folks, it is different for every single couple that does it. We've had couples that have had sexless marriages where one partner says, you know what? I think, I think we're going to try this. And they go from being a sexless marriage to this couple in particular. They're, they write in from time to time telling us that they're having sex more than we are. And they're older. And they're older. And you know what? What happened during that challenge was that they started communicating together again. And the communication started before the challenge. But they, they started realizing that walls had been built up that were just... Not that the walls were imaginary, but the problems were were not dealt with. And so, you know, they created these fake walls around themselves as protection. And really what they needed to do was talk to each other. Mm -hmm. They needed to sit down. Like we tell you guys, make time, 10 minutes a day Mm -hmm. to sit down and just, what's going on with your day? 
but being real and transparent, taking off those masks and saying, you know what? I'm going to tell you, I'm having a lousy day. Yeah, the boss yelled at me. The kids were cranky. This one's being stubborn. Um, You know what? I had a great day. I got everything done on my to-do list, whatever it is. Share it with your spouse. Share it with your spouse so that you can create that intimacy lifestyle because the intimacy lifestyle is not just about having sex once, twice, three times a week, whatever works out for you guys. It is about creating a relationship where intimacy in all of its forms matters to the two of you. Right. You know, and when we see those marriages that, that start the seven days of sex challenge and we've got, you guys have got to pick up the book, uh, whether you wait till the end of January and pick up the physical soft cover or you get the ebook because it's, it, we've sprinkled testimonies from couples throughout that book, couples that have been you know, doing this challenge, you know, they, maybe they just did it once. Maybe they were part of the first year, the second year, the third year. It's stories of transformation about what happens when you put your spouse first and you make intimacy a priority in your marriage. Because in this day and time, that does not happen to the re- regular average Joe down the street. Mm-hmm. You know, and so when you see when you see couples that dealt with postpartum depression and, and decide to embark on this as a way to rekindle what they've lost, when you see couples say, "You know what? We, we've been we've drifted apart, but we're going to try this." And we have, we've had lots of listeners who maybe haven't made it all seven days. You know, maybe there was a hiccup on day two, but you know what? They got back into it on day three and did six out of seven or four out of seven. Mm -hmm. They saw transformation in their marriage because we don't focus on one another enough. Right. And we will be doing another seven days of sex challenge this year. We haven't put it on the calendar yet since you're telling everybody to pull out their calendars. Uh, but we, you guys know we do it every year, so it will be on the calendar, just not yet. It's probably more like May. May tends to work out best for us, kind of that last hurrah before the kids get out of school. Right. So, you know, that's, that's another area where if you're the spouse that does not initiate, I'm going to call you out right now, really think about what you want 2013 to look like. Because one thing that happens typically in the seven days of sex challenge, you know, couples go back and forth over who's initiating, or if you decide to embrace the intimacy lifestyle, we really advocate alternating who's the initiating spouse. Right. And the reason for that is because if you're the non-initiating spouse, your partner is tired of doing all the work. They're tired of being set up for rejection because they never know if you're going to say yes or no. If you adopt the intimacy lifestyle and you, you figure out what's going to work for the two of you, is it twice a week? Is it three times a week? Is it whatever your perfect plan is? When you take turns initiating, you bring a level of desire back to your marriage mm-hmm. that has been missing. And, and again, we said find one thing that you can change this year. For you who being the non-initiator in your marriage, this might be what you work on this year is making it a point. What can you do? Write down those things, you know, have a little notepad beside you or Evernote on your smartphone and go, how can I initiate, you know, sexual, physical intimacy with my spouse? What is it I can do to show that I'm initiating and let them know? That's, that's the key. A lot of us, what we expect is, and again, we've talked about this before in the past is that initiating is different from everybody and for Mm -hmm. everybody. And you know what? Those, those slight brushes, those slight touches, the kisses on the neck, those are forms of initiating. Now, if you're not open and sharing this with your spouse, they may not be getting it. So don't, don't feel like You're being turned down or turned away unless you've really shared this with your spouse. So have that time, write down ways that you can initiate and then sit down with your spouse and say, Hey, you know what? I have 10 ways that I I will be able to show you that I'm initiating. And again, if you have Evernote, maybe you share it with them that way they have it and you guys can talk about that. But that's your one thing this year that you can work on, you know, 
you can change if you truly want to. I do believe that. I believe that God has the power to make change. The problem is, and I know this for my own life, is sometimes I close off my heart, I ball up my fist so tight that he can't come in. He can't transform me because I am not allowing him to. I have taken control. I have built up the walls. I have closed everything off. It is only when I'm able to open up my hands, break down the walls and go, Jesus, I lay it upon you. I put it at your feet because I believe that if you created this earth, that you created this universe, that you can change me. Mm -hmm. And I've seen change here in the last month because I've been willing to let go. And it's been hard, not easy. It's been hard and it's been a struggle for me at times, but I am seeing it little by little. I see the changes happening and it's only because I was willing to let go and let him take over. And, you know, relinquishing that control. I mean, that, that's a huge area mm -hmm. for us because Tony is not alone. I'm not alone in this. We, we like to have control over all aspects of our lives. It's a human quality, human trait. The reality is, is that we don't control all of those things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's why we want you guys to look at 2013 and put plans into place. Because when you're just sitting there letting things happen at will, with no plan, you know, I, I don't know what I want my marriage to look like at the end of 2013. I don't know what I want our finances to look like. I don't know what our intimacy is going to look like. If you don't even have a plan, I can guarantee you at the end of 2013, it's going to look like the end of 2012, possibly worse. Mm -hmm. Because when we don't plan, life just happens and we are completely at the whim. You know, you can't control everything, but you can control yourself. You can control the decisions that you make. If you make a decision this year that you're not going to spend as much money, guess what? You will spend less money. If you make a decision this year that you're going to initiate sex more with your spouse, you will do that. You know, you have control over you. So make a decision on the changes that you want to see in your marriage. You know, maybe it's being more aware. I mean, I've brought up finances a lot. Heading into a new year, finances are always an issue for folks, especially coming out of Christmas, because it's easy to overspend. It's easy to get carried away. It's easy to find yourselves under a mountain of debt heading into a new year, credit card and whatnot. And, and we lose sight sometimes of how much our finances are tied to our physical intimacy mm -hmm. and you know, different spouses will handle that stress differently because right. we all have um, unique relationships with money. And I want to share this email that we received um, from a couple that has written to us in the past. She is the high desire spouse. Right. And she was writing to us that, that they had this, you know, typically she's high desire and, and they don't have sex as often as she would like. And she shared with us that recently, uh, she, they had a few weeks where like the sex was good. Like it was, you know, kind of reaching more of the high desire. And then all of a sudden it slowed down again. And she writes, instead of getting upset or frustrated, I thought about what had happened around the time the sex slowed down. We started having an increased amount of financial issues and he started having some issues at work. And, you know, she goes on to say that he had told her in the past when they were having, you know, when the desire wasn't as high, that it wasn't her. Right. He had told her that, but she didn't believe him. She didn't believe it. She's like, oh, no, 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 no. It's got to be something with me. You know, we're, we're, we're not jiving. And this was the first time that she realized the burden that those financial and work issues were having on their sex life. She could see, you know, when she really took the time, she could see the direct relationship. And so I want you guys to be aware of, of financial intimacy. Read, read the rest of that, though, because she really gets into, you know, that sort of that awakening mm, moment okay. where she's like, oh, the aha moment there. She said, he always told me that it wasn't me, but until this time, I never believed him. 
Then as I was praying last night, I caught myself saying, help me to deal with him not wanting to have sex and not get frustrated with him. I thought about it and that's not what I want. I have been dealing with it for years. And she put dealing in quotes. I changed my words and asked God to restore the sexual intimacy that we once had. I know how powerful words are and I know that we have to pray for what we want. I don't want to just deal with not being intimate with my husband. I want that intimacy back with him in all areas. Mm. And sex is one of those areas. Uh, And then she said that, thank you for repeatedly reading and answering her emails. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) But you know, here's, here's a wife that realized that was able to connect the dots and see that when her husband is burdened by stuff that is going on, it is hard for him to be sexually intimate with her. Mm -hmm. That is a huge revelation in a marriage that yes, we are impacted by outside forces. Right. And it's not always about us. Remember when we talked about, you know, the mind and the conscious mind can start chattering away and, you know, we can sit there and go, Oh my gosh, it's me. It's my looks. It's this. I did that. I did this whatever the the conscious mind is just going to start chattering away and it can honestly destroy you and it can destroy your marriage. But what ended up happening here is she realized that it came, it came out that it's not me. She finally got it through her head that it's not me. What else is happening around us? She became aware of the surroundings and was able to go, okay, at this point, that's when it slowed down. Mm-hmm. And what was happening? It was finance. It was stress. It was work-related issues. A perfect time. Maybe you're not having sexual intimacy at that point in time, but maybe you're really diving into your emotional intimacy, your spiritual intimacy at that time, right? Mm-hmm. Because those are just as important as that sexual intimacy. I know the sexual intimacy, you know, it explodes the hormones in our brain and and that's why we really enjoy it. You know, we get that euphoric feeling from it, but being able to be close to your spouse and other forms of intimacy will add to your marriage. Yeah. And the thing that I love about this particular email is that she's been in prayer over her marriage Mm -hmm. that, you know, she realizes the power of words and and I have to tell you, I've been, you know, around just different women lately at networking events and, and whatnot. And, and and the power of our words, what we declare over our lives, what we ask for in our lives sets us up on that path. Mm-hmm. You know, I was talking to a girlfriend last night and, and she's telling me what's going on in her life. And there was just some negative lines that she was feeding herself. And we're in the middle of the conversation. And I just said to her, I said, stop it. And yeah, she paused. She's like, stop what? I said, stop feeding yourself that junk. Sometimes you just have to say to all the voices in your head that are telling you, you know, oh, you're not good enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not wealthy enough. You're not smart enough. Just tell them to stop. You know, Tony had posted a picture up on the Facebook page earlier this week. It was a photo and it said, something to the effect of, I wish sometimes that you could see you how I see you. Our spouses love us. Mm -hmm. And when we declare that we are going to make changes in our marriage for the better, when we declare that we are going to work on ourselves and make ourselves healthy and stronger in our marriages, that will play out for you. Working on yourself, making yourself healthy will never be a bad thing. Praying for your marriage and for what you desire in your marriage is never a bad thing. You know, this, this emailer, this fan has the awareness, just like, you know, there's a reason stripped down ends with prayer works because I will tell you time and time again, I have seen the power of prayer to change me and by changing me to change my marriage. It works, folks. The caveat to that being it all works in God's timing. Hmm. So in our microwave society, you don't get the answer that you want the minute you submit it to God. (laughs) Not usually. Sometimes there's a delay. Sometimes there's a not right now. Sometimes there's a no. 
to those prayers, but keep that communication with God open. Yeah. God. Keep it open. It's just like Tony was talking about how, you know, he's been a control freak and I'm going to use that word. <laughs> but, you know, it's true. I think he'd use it himself over certain aspects of what we've been doing with one, just tight fisted. I'm just, I'm holding on to your life. I'm going to, you know, this is just, I'm going to do it my way. And when he was challenged to open up those fists and to let go and to just be in prayer over what's going on, the blessings that have come from that time that he has spent with God have blown us away, Mm -hmm. but he had to open up. He had to be in prayer. And that, and if you're in a tough place in your marriage heading into 2013, maybe it's time to open up and let God in. Maybe it's time to take your marriage to God in prayer. And if you've been doing that, maybe it's time to get some others involved. Because I will tell you, there is a power in a community of believers, a power of prayer as it spreads throughout a community to create transformation. And, you know, so we've been, we've been talking about all of these different things, all of these different areas where you might be saying, yeah, I want to work on that in 2013. And, and we've talked about different things that people have done over the last three years as they've made choices to make their marriages different. And that's the ready part of all of this. The set part of ready, set, go is that you and your spouse need to spend some time talking about what you want 2013 to look like. Mm-hmm. What's that one area? And, and I'm, we are going to say one area because I don't want you to get crazy on me and think, Oh, we're going to change 12 things over 12 months. Or, you know, I've got a list of 20 things I want to see different in my marriage. No, I'm sorry. You have to whittle it down to one. Yeah. And the reason for that is that you can focus if you're working on your finances and your sex life and your and your and this laundry list, how on earth do you get it done? How do you focus? Right. And it's not to say that you're not going to have those other things that are, are going to be a part of your life. But what ends up happening is that when you look at one area saying, I want to be a spouse who initiates, you know, two times a month, four times a month. You can look around and when you're getting information and you're taking it in, you can apply that to that area. Okay, I see what they're saying here. How do I take that and apply it to initiating sex in my marriage? Mm -hmm. You know, it's one of those things that I, I, we we have way too much information overload and, and we're here to say we're the same way. And, you know, for us, we have had to just whittle down, especially when it comes to this podcast. What do we want to do in 2013? You know, what do we want to do? And so we've had to come down and whittle it down and whittle it down and go, okay, this is our goal for one extraordinary marriage. And being in business together, we have a lot of emotional intimacy. We, we not only talking about our marriage constantly, but we're talking about business together and everything that is wrapped around it. But we had to come down and go, this is one thing we want to accomplish this year. How are we going to do it? And we came out with a plan. And so everything that comes around now, the information we grab and we get and we learn from people is all honing in to go, that's our goal. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to do. How do we do it? It all goes through the filter of that one thing that you're working on. Right. And you will find that, that when you have a focus, whether it's on you know, you want to do the seven days of sex challenge this year. And so you guys just focus on, okay, what, what's going to be that week? Where's this week that we, you know, she doesn't have her period and he's not traveling and the kids are occupied, whatever it is, or you, you know, you're starting the intimacy lifestyle and you're thinking, okay, you know what, what does a month look like? Not only are we getting date nights on the calendar, but how do we, you know, what are going to be our days or your days or, you know, whatnot. When you've got that focus, then all the information, all of your decisions Mm -hmm. well, you know what? I'm not going to say yes to going out with the girls on Friday night because first Friday of the month, that's the day night. Right. Uh, You know what girls can we go out the second week because I make my husband a priority. You know, whatever it is, you will filter through that lens of what you're focused on. And then ultimately you got to put it into play folks. You got to go. You got to, you know, when, when the gun shoots at the track meet, what do you do? 
You're running. You get off the blocks and you go. You don't stand there and look at everybody else take off. You go too. And you run the race. Hard. You just go. And sometimes we are so set in fear of what may happen that we don't leave the blocks. This year, if you've been stuck in years past, you got to leave the blocks. You have to get up and you got to start running because we all run the race. We all run the race and it's all going to be at a different pace and it's all going to be at a different time. But you got to leave the blocks Mm -hmm. to experience it because if you don't, you're missing out on what could be an extraordinary marriage for you. And the wishing and the hoping and the praying, nothing, none of that will have any, any good if you don't take action. You've got to take action. Just like the people we've talked about here today, they took action. Something happened and they saw change. Mm-hmm. So look at that and take the golden nuggets that come out of it. Take those golden nuggets and grasp onto them and what you learned and what you were able to achieve together and then keep moving forward because we want you to have an amazing 2013. Mm -hmm. We want to hear those letters from you. So you can email them into info at one extraordinary marriage.com. For those of you who've done a seven days of sex challenge, maybe that's your goal this year. Hey, amen. Do it. We want to hear from you. Call us. Scream at the top of your, uh, your lungs and just say, we did it. That's all you need to do. We want to play it here. You call in at 858-876-5663. If it's starting the intimacy lifestyle, get it started. Figure it out. Play with it. Try it out for a month or two. Make adjustments. Make it work. But please, folks, don't end 2013 the way you started it change make action a part of your everyday vocabulary Mm -hmm. because you are going to see it when you go after it and we believe that because we have seen it in our own lives and so as you start this new year have a good one we love you guys and we'll see you next time